welcome everybody into the dividend growth portfolio. This is a one that I've had since uh, December 20th of 2019. So um, just had its two year birthday. Um, so it's fitting, I guess, to come in and uh, do a review of this. This has just been really surprisingly unbelievable uh, of an opportunity to roll out to would be investors that may be interested in, in dividend growth investing. But I think a lot of investors kind of fall short in looking below the surface in what's possible. What I mean by that is, I mean, what do you, where do you start? I mean, if you had a, a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars, <throat> maybe you buy three or four or five or ten dividend stocks. Uh, maybe two or two or three of them don't perform the way that you expect. And you know, a lot of these dividend growth payers, they're they're slow to grow. They're established businesses. So to expect that you're gonna, you know, pick eight to ten in your portfolio and they're just gonna go up and beat the market every year is probably not realistic at all. Um, this is a little different approach in that I've got uh, just shy of eighty holdings in this portfolio. The way I look at this is if I have a few lemons in this portfolio, it, it doesn't hurt quite as bad because the those uh, losses are buffered or mitigated. Um, by the sheer number of, of, um, of payers in here. Furthermore, it's amazing how often these dividend payouts come through. We'll just click in here and, and, and we'll take a look at the different sector payouts here. This is of interest uh, for anybody out there. As expected, utilities would be close to the top and then staples right below it. These are right in line with what I would consider to be you know, uh, the, the the sectors that pay the most dividends. But um, uh, nonetheless, 620 in earned dividends in this portfolio. I'm super excited for the prospects of this portfolio as it grows. The capital appreciation in this has just been fabulous. Um, you, these small lines here is where I've actually strategically funded up the account. Um, so every now and then I'll just throw a little boost in there and, and, and just provide that little extra oomph. This isn't for any other reason other than just I, I earmark a little bit of surplus capital and I, and I earmark this and align the two and boom, there you go. You've got a strategic fund up. This has no bearing at all on my attempt to time the market at, at, at any time at all. Um, this is just really I've got the money so I invest it. And that's just how I choose to roll on this. So how is the two-year checkup doing on this portfolio? We'll roll to the bottom here, and I just want to earmark quickly. The allocation here is spread over 10 sectors. I do omit real estate from this. This is a tax account. So these are buy and uh, hold long holdings on this. But um, as you can see, the performance has just been off the chain uh, as one of the uh, 10 sectors. The remaining nine are in the green. Telecom is lagging a little bit, but no problem. See, new fundings roll into this. And if you guys will recall, when uh, energy was one of the lagging sectors for a long, long time, um, those funds flowed in there uh, aggressively, I might add. And now look at it. It swung back just like telecom will swing back. This um, is is indicative of, of secular rotation within the stock market. And, uh, you know, this happens all the time. You've got outperforming sectors and you've got ones that uh, will lag the market. And that's just completely normal. But uh, I'm real excited about the prospects of this portfolio going forward. This is going to be a lot of fun here. I want to chronicle and show you guys um, all of the holdings within the portfolio. Uh, I haven't checked this prior to filming. Um, so so th if there's a surprise here, I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't really monitor this very often except for when I chronicle it through the rollout in the channel. Uh, there's no reason to. I mean, these are established uh, companies, uh, really um, Fortune 500 companies that, um, you know, I don't need to monitor them. I don't. I, I don't I, I don't do any type of uh, evaluation on these companies uh, outside of I just want to own them. And, uh, you know, there's some schools of thought out there that uh, may suggest that I have too many in this. I beg to differ. I don't. I think cumulatively is just as good of a dividend rendering as uh, a dividend rendering of the same amount in fewer stocks. In other words, the bottom line is still about money. 
and if I can earn that dividend cumulatively rather than uh, singularly or with a batch of um, uh, a few stocks, then what's the difference? To be honest with you, um, I've had a number of surprises in this portfolio that I may not have invested in. Uh, had it not been for my approach here in keeping the amount of money devoted to each of these holdings relatively under control and not get over levered in some of these. And those are the ones that have exploded. Um, they've worked really, really well for me. So as we scroll down the list, I may earmark a few of these. You know, Goldman Sachs is a fantastic example of one that just exploded on me. You know, and and over a, a share and a half. That's all I have in this. Not even a five hundred dollar bill. Uh, a a three hundred dollars was invested in this on the onset, and we're up one hundred and thirty two dollars of appreciation. This is just one holding. You know, investors would kill for these types of return. I did nothing special to go after that return. Look at a Vago Broadcom, uh, Broadcom AVGO. Um, that's even better. We got four hundred and sixty nine dollars. Um, the suckers were up up over two hundred and twenty six dollars total value seven sixty six, so just absolutely fantastic performance here. Gosh, Cisco, the list goes on. This is a little bit more. Um, so where the money can buy a little more shares in it, it's it's great. McDonald's here owning it long and passive. Goodness, the cost basis there five ten. That's over six hundred dollars now. Thermo Fisher Scientific. And so as we just scroll through here, you're kind of getting a, an insight to what I wanted out of this portfolio. I wanted to own a lot of stocks in here. I really did. And I, I'm, I don't have this capped. I, I may look. There's a few others that I'd like to add to this. Um, I don't have Tyson in here. I'd love to have Tyson. I'd love to have Cisco Foods. You know, I'd love to have some of those other tried and true dividend kings in here that uh, I I opted not to own in this. But this gives me the opportunity to throw a few hundred bucks in it. And hey, I'm an investor in it, which in my mind is is uh, better to be an investor than to not be an investor. Look at Home Depot there, uh, 408 on the cost basis there. That's just absolutely run up fabulous, up 35%. CVS, another nice winner here up 33 percent these are some big wins and when you chalk up some of these wins there disney i take it on the chin a little bit it's no problem right so we don't we don't lose our lose our shorts because we're down a little bit on disney the funds will flow into disney and we'll buy the base that's how that works in m1 finance um, some of these just uh, incrementally up there's the travelers a dow component and duke energy and utilities um, intel's taking it a little bit on the chin here no big deal um, look at Eli Lilly. Holy smokes, up over 50%. This is less than a two-share position. Just s silly, quite frankly. I Some of these gains are just absolutely baffling. You know, and when I talked about becoming over-levered a little bit, I own a $10,000 bill on AT&T, and AT&T has just been extremely disappointing. Trading it now, it's recovered a bit at $25 a share, but I'm only down 10% here. I, I'm down significantly more in the larger position. I would have never thought that would have happened to AT&T, and look what happened. I took a big haircut because I have a larger position, and it just speaks to uh, my conviction on this portfolio owning you know, shares l less than a share of Costco. Look at that appreciation, $145 up, just shy of 50%. Uh, you, you just it, it's it's insane and you might think well why didn't you just invest more oh boy if we had that crystal ball wouldn't that have been nice um, I wouldn't be uh, sharing my story and journey and trying to make sense of this stock market um, I will have already have met my goal of financial security and wealth but we all know that that doesn't exist in nature so we have to strategically try to take advantage of the market try to reduce as much risk as we possibly can in the market you know, I look at Lowe's, 112, my goodness, you know, and these are just buy and own stocks. There's Nextera, nice 12% appreciation and a nice big utility. Um, Medtronic, that's too bad. Medtronic's one of my faves um, and we'll continue to own it. It's, it's my fave whether or not I'm up or down in it. I just so happen to be down at the time of filming this video and, and, and sharing it with you guys. Uh, AMD has just been on a tear. I mean, that's just silly. 71% on on some of those. And again, you know, coming back to my example of people out there that want to end up doing some dividend investing, you know, you may go for the very best out there and, and only fill your portfolio with eight, 10 stocks. 
you know, I, I wanted to invest a carpet bomb style and just invest in everything that I, I, I could grab my hands on and then just dollar cost average them slowly over time. And it obviously works really well. There's a foreign TD that's Canadian uh, uh, Bank of Canada here, Toronto Dominion. That's one of their biggest up 21%. Can't scoff at those results here. Pepsi, small position. I do own this uh, large and long in the uh, Roth IRA as well. Pepsi is one of my conviction top 10 stocks to buy and own forever um, without a problem. ConocoPhillips up over 50%. You know, that would have been a name and energy that I wouldn't have thought to put a large position on. Um, had I put a large position on it, hell, maybe I'd be down 50%. That's usually how it goes, but uh, um, the stock market doesn't have a conscience. It, uh, it happens sometimes with single stock down, little dab in 3M and Verizon, a couple of Dow components there, no big deal. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll take those into 2022 and, and go right to war. Uh, Charles Schwab, absolutely fantastic holding for me. Um, and right above it there, Caterpillar, uh, fractionally up at 6%. Bank of Nova Scotia, that's um, uh, two, two out of the three Canadian banks that I own in this wonderful dividend payer. And I can't, I, I, gosh, I think TD was up about 21% as well. So it's, it looks like those foreign banks, yeah. Gosh, Bank of Nova Scotia is up the same amount as TD Bank. We'll have to see what um, um, what the other bank, the uh, Toronto Dominion, um, or excuse me, the other Bank of Canada that I've got in here. Um, we'll get to it here. Coke, Valero. Fantastic. I'm just scoping through here. Look at that. Nike, nice Dow component, up 16%. Comcast down a little bit. That's indicative of the telecom uh, uh, swoon we're in here a little bit. Um, of course, Procter & Gamble's just been on a tear. Staples have been really, really big. And there it is. Royal Bank of Canada up 20%. Look at that. You know, just by owning all three of the large Canadian banks there, we're cumulatively up there 20% on an aggregate between the three of them. You know, on a dollar per, per dollar basis, that's not much, but you just can't can't argue with those results. It's just fantastic. There's Sherwin-Williams. My goodness, and materials up 40%. Waste management up 40%. APD, which is my top conviction pick for 2022 uh, in materials. Absolutely fantastic company. like to get that up to a whole share. That'd be kind of cool. Up 17%. Look at all this green. Just an insane amount of green in this portfolio, man. You want to invest and you want to win. There's a lot of different ways to go about this gig. This is just one element about what makes sense to me. And I didn't have a chance to count the red, but some of these are fractionally in the red. Exxon Mobil, I can live with that. JP Morgan, I can live with that fractionally in the red. Um, but I, I think for the most part, you guys can all agree that if the verdict was out, whether or not this was worth it or not, you know, it, it, it absolutely is just a fantastic way of investing and gives me some options when the, the market goes down. Gives me the ability to fund this up like I have over time. Gives me the ability to enjoy this dividend renderings that I share with you guys on occasion through the rollout of the dividend growth portfolio. I'll share this in the comment section for you guys um, or a version of this to get you started. I, I can't share much over 50 stocks. So it's a condensed version of this dividend growth portfolio, but it does give you the framework to build upon it. And that way, if you wanted to take it and turn it into something uh, more reflective of what I've uh, uh, shared with you guys today, you're absolutely free to do that. So uh, appreciate you guys tuning in to the dividend growth portfolio. We'll kick you back and we'll conclude the video.